What's up everybody, Bootsy Greenwood here, and I haven't put out a video in a while because I've been busy growing out my new rat tail. Oh yeah, it's coming in nice. Today I want to talk about emotional transaction, continuing this idea of how we communicate with the universe. Let's get into it. All right. So you hear people talk about how if you want something, then you're telling the universe that you don't have it. And that's relatively true. But one of my mentors was talking a couple of weeks ago about the difference between want and need. So we know that the universe communicates through the language of emotion. We discovered that a couple of videos ago. And what we want to understand is the difference between these two things, okay? Neediness versus wanting. There's nothing wrong with wanting something. It's okay to want something. But here's the thing. Emotionally, we're basically creating weather systems with the universe. So in order to get the thing that we want to have in our lives, the more we actively want it or basically need it and feel that energy, the more we're broadcasting that, the more we're actually pushing away from us. It's repelling the thing, right? As I've said before, there's the law of attraction and the law of repulsion, and they're both working. So this, is actively distancing ourselves from that thing that we want because we're we're generating neediness for it. We're all uh, trying to do anything that we can. We're desperate, and desperation is a stinky cologne. And desperation is only going to make it really, really obvious to not just the universe, but also people. It's going to push the object away that we wish to have and it's going to put people off because we're trying to manipulate them to get the object that we want. Now, one thing I want to really touch on here is this idea. People are not objects. Okay. I think we've all been objectified at certain levels or maybe used for different things um, in our lives as human beings. And, one thing that is really, really obvious is when someone is needy with us, right? Like if we're in a relationship or if we're attempting to be in a relationship and someone's very needy, they're grabby of our attention all the time, then ultimately we're just going to, we're going to be repelled by that. We're going to want to back away. There's just no other way to do it, right? It's like the only way to outsmart like, like somebody who's, who's, who's a, a, a stage five clinger is to just cling at them. And then they'll be like, whoa, whoa, take it easy. But people are not objects. So things are a little bit different when it comes to this kind of thing. I'm, I'm not talking about uh, attracting a partner right now. I'm really talking about working through uh, trying to attain a goal. Okay. The truth of it is, it's not bad to want a thing, but you have to be at ease. So the Buddhists talk about what? Detachment, right? I'm not spelling well today. Detachment. And detachment comes off like this idea where you're like, you can't have that thing. You have to not want it. Whoa, grasshopper. I think that's a little bit weird. That Doesn't that suck? It sounds terrible, right? It really sucks the romance out of the thing, whatever that thing is. Well, I think detachment is, first of all, a translated word. It's translated into English from probably Sanskrit or something like that. And we think, oh, well, if in order to have something, it means I can't want it. But that's really not true because let's look at the distinction here. Wanting versus needing. Okay? You can want something and be at ease about it. You can say, look, I really do, let's say you want to be an actor. I really do want this part, okay? I want to be in the movie. I want to take some action to get myself there. However, I'm at ease 
and relatively indifferent regardless if I get it or if I don't get it. I really do want it, but if it's not you know, meant to be or whatever, then that's okay. I'm at ease with it. I'm also at ease with getting it, and that's a big thing. Being at ease with actually having the thing that it is that you want, well, that is gonna absolutely allow you to have it because mostly, most of the time, the reason why we can't have something that we want is because we don't believe that we deserve it for some reason. Something in us is telling us, you know that thing you want? You don't deserve it. So we don't wanna drum up a bunch of excess desire, right? Because all of that energy is going to work against us ultimately. It's always going to create a balance. So we don't want to create this neediness, but let's say we're that actor and we want this part in this movie. It would work really well for us. We would be good at it. Well, we don't start calling our agents and calling all these other people with weird messages, trying to manipulate them into giving us what it is that we want. No. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't hit up your agent and you say, hey, I really like that part. I think it would work really well for me. I'm into it. But if you blow them up and send them 10 messages, guess what's not going to happen, right? And if you try and manipulate them, people are going to smell it from a mile away because that's just neediness and desperation. People are not objects. So when we're talking about this, it's really important to distinguish these two things. If you want something, or if you want some certain situation in your life, then that's okay, okay? But when we begin to manipulate people, we are creating all these weird emotional transactions in the universe where people are not going to want to just yield to what it is that we want them to do, okay? Because people are not objects. We don't live in a solipsistic world, okay? Solipsism is the idea that you are the only thing in existence. And it's very easy to get roped into this ideology in the New Age movement. This is what a lot of New Age is basically teaching, that you're responsible for this pandemic, you're responsible for the two people who are fighting over a popsicle in the street, you're responsible for the, you know, the accident that you, you know, somebody had because of your thought life. Here's the good news. You are not, okay? You're off the hook for that. Can you imagine how lonely it would be to be the only thing in existence here? There are multiple causes happening all the time. It's not just your thoughts. You're not that powerful, okay? You're not that powerful. You're not the center of the universe. That's a good thing. It should be celebrated. You should be very happy to hear that news, okay? You're off the hook for things that have happened to humanity, okay? Now, you do have a lot of power over what you do, and you have influence over the people around you. But you are not the only person in the universe. So that's a very dangerous, slippery, slippery slope. Take it from me. I've been there, okay? So in order to really embody the thing that we want in order to really have that in our life, we really need to have and maintain an ease about it. Whether we really have it or not, if you want to walk into a reality or if you want to be able to pull something off, you can't do anything unless you're first relaxed. Have you ever gone on stage? Have you ever done a speech, done some public speaking, and you're super gripped with nerves? Guess who's gonna bomb? You guessed it. Because there's an emotional transaction going on. You've overemphasized it. It's such a big deal to you. Anything that's a big deal to you is unattainable. It's gonna make you fall into this needy role, okay? Which is not abundant at all. It's okay to want the thing again, but needing it is always going to repel it and push it away from you, all right? So having that sense of ease, not that it's not that you're not going to get upset from time to time, not that you're not going to, you know, have an emotional fit here and there. That stuff's fine. You just have to let it go, right? But having a sense of ease about the thing, being relatively indifferent 
and being okay without it, okay, it's not complete and total detachment, but you're going to be all right. You will survive if you don't get that thing. Then you'll get it. You know, a lot of times what happens with us is we go through this process where we need the thing first and we feel all of this emotion and we're actively pushing it away from us. Eventually, though, we get tired of the exhausting process of needing it. And then all of a sudden we're like, well, you know what? I, I'm just tired of wanting it. This has happened to me so many times, by the way. I'm just so tired of wanting it. I don't even care anymore. And then we forget about it. And then what happens? We have ease and then it comes into our life. So <laughs> we want to we want to try to shorten this process. And in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about some strategies to do that. Guys, I got some really cool stuff going on. I got a brand new audio book. It's at my website. You can check that out. I'm asking only for an email address. There's also an ebook version of that. I'm asking only for an email address. I have a coaching program that's coming out. The beginning of this coming up year 2021 i'm very excited about so if you're interested in any of those things comment below go check out my website bootsygreenwood.com i also have a patreon podcast that's up on my patreon page that you can listen to absolutely free that's going to talk about some of the concepts that we're going over this week so i hope you all have enjoyed this video and uh, please like, subscribe, all that, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.